This video demonstrates a robotic assisted McEwen esophagectomy for end stage achalasia. The patient is a 68 year old female with long standing achalasia who had been treated over the years with pneumatic dilatations and Botox injections. She had become refractory to these interventions with worsening symptoms. She was referred to thoracic surgery. Here are the coronal and sagittal CT scan images and you can appreciate the chronically dilated esophagus. Following a detailed evaluation, the decision was made to proceed with total esophagectomy using the robotic platform. Thoracic port placement is shown. We utilize four robotic ports and a 15 millimeter assistant port. Intrathoracic dissection begins with mobilization and division of the azygos vein. The dilated esophagus can be appreciated in the background. Next, the inferior pulmonary ligament is in size, including other diaphragmatic attachments to the lung. Adhesions between the lung and the dilated esophagus are taken down. The dissection is carried up into the thoracic inlet. The robot provides an excellent platform for visualization and relatively easy reach of the thoracic inlet. We then utilize the vessel sealer for most of the dissection. The dissection is now carried inferiorly 
towards the hiatus. until the entire thoracic esophagus is fully mobilized. Next, we identify and clip the thoracic duct to reduce the risk of postoperative chylothorax. The fully mobilized intrathoracic esophagus is shown. We then inject the paravertebral intercostal spaces with a mixture of expiral and marking for postoperative analgesia. A chest tube is inserted and the lung is reinflated. Abdominal port placement is shown. A liver retractor port is placed in the right lower quadrant. We then utilize four robotic ports, including the camera. An assistant port is placed in the left mid quadrant, as shown. Abdominal dissection begins with mobilization of the hiatus after incising the pars flaccida. Hiatal attachments to the esophagus are taken down with the bipolar device until the intra-abdominal esophagus is fully mobilized. Next, we take down the gastrocolic ligament and short gastric vessels. The gastrocolic ligament division is continued distally along the greater curvature. The right gastroepiploic is identified throughout and preserved. The distal esophagus is looped to facilitate further mobilization. We then identify and isolate the left gastric artery. It is skeletonized to facilitate stapler division. The esophagus is further mobilized into the chest until we connect with the intrathoracic portion of the previously mobilized intrathoracic esophagus. Next, we turn attention to creating the gastric conduit. To do this, we move the camera 
to arm 3 and the cardia to arm 2. We then utilize the port site of arm 1 for application of the Covidian tristapler. To complete the gastric conduit and excise the lesser curvature, the stapler is brought in through the port site of arm 4. Creation of the gastric conduit is completed and the excised lesser curvature is placed in a retrieval bag and removed from the abdomen. Using a left cervical incision, the cervical esophagus is mobilized. The gastric conduit is then pulled up into the cervical wound. It should pull up without tension and orientation should be maintained. Next, we divide the proximal cervical esophagus. You can appreciate the dilated esophagus. We then proceed to divide the distal esophagus, distal to the GE junction. The resected specimen is shown. Next, the staple line on the proximal esophagus is opened. and a gastrotomy is created on the anterior wall of the gastric conduit. The anastomosis is created by inserting the stapler into each opening. Firing of the stapler creates the posterior wall of the anastomosis. The nasogastric tube is then advanced and directed into the gastric conduit. The anterior wall of the anastomosis is then closed using a running foro PDS suture.
A second layer closure of the anterior wall is performed using a running 3-0 PDS suture. The completed anastomosis is shown. The wound is closed over a drain. Her early postoperative course was uneventful. She was started on clear liquids on day three and discharged home on day four. Two weeks later, she underwent outpatient upper endoscopy with Botox injection and pyloric dilatation, which is routine for my practice. At the time, she was known to have a healthy conduit and anastomosis. However, two months later, she had to undergo pyloroplasty for issues with conduit outlet obstruction. She has since done very well. Thank you.